Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to present you some updates of our project, science-driven and farmer-oriented insect pest management for cowpea agroecosystems in West Africa. Our project is operating in several countries. Let's start with Burkina Faso, uh, around Kambwanse and also Bobo Julasso and Bamfora. And here, our main collaborators are Evelyn Compaure and Fuseni Traore. Evelyn is a gender specialist. Fuseni is an entomologist. They are both based at INERA. In Niger, we work in the region of Maradi, and here our main collaborators are uh, Amadou Lawali of INRAN and Professor Ibrahim Bawa of the University of Maradi. In Nigeria, we work mainly in the region of uh, Iloren right now, but we will also be moving to the region of south of Kano, as you will see. And here our collaborator is uh, James Ojo of the University of the Quara State University. In the US, we work with uh, David Motachanches of uh, MSU and Julia Bello Bravo at Purdue. And then finally, in Benin, uh, we work with our new postdoc on a German fellowship, Hilaire Pongbe, and then Benjamin Datino and myself at IATA. So this year, I would like to focus on some aspects of our work, which I couldn't present in details last year. Uh, I will start with biocontrol agents, though. Uh, just a quick update from Nigeria, for instance, where uh, we had uh, successful releases of parasitoids, uh, both the Liragatis javanus and Phanerotomus lepte. Uh, in Quara State, you can see the details from the table. Uh, what is important to note here is this plant. So these these are the flowers of uh, Phenenoptera cyanescens. It's a, it's a widespread shrub in these latitudes. It's called the Yoruba indigo and is a host plant for both Maruca vitrata and the parasitoids. So it is important that we focus on these plants during the dry season as well. Then we also have carried out biocontrol sensitization campaigns in all three quiet countries, but it, it, is, it is quite challenging actually to capture the exact number of participants. Uh, sometimes we invite authorities, farmers, uh, and so on. So uh, people come and go, so it's difficult really to to take statistics of those people participating. Now let's move to chemical ecology. Uh, this I couldn't present last year. In fact, we just installed now our new equipment at IATA. So this is Hilaire proudly uh, showing his new toys. So uh, state-of-the-art GCMS. Uh, but the real chemical ecology work is in the field. It's the dirt work in the field. And so Hiller went to uh, see the, uh, James at Quasu, and they were both uh, investigating the host finding behavior of the, of the parasitoid, sorry, uh, basically by collecting volatiles from infested and uninfested flowering structures of cowpea. So, and this is translated now into chromatograms from the GCMS. So you can see differences between the infested flowers and the infested flowers. Um, it's quite exciting to see some structures which still need to be elucidated, particularly in the infested flowers. And we are excited that uh, this will give us some clues about the host finding behavior of the parasitoid. Chemical ecology has also been uh, an important tool in the past, looking at aggregation pheromones of Clavigrella tomentosicollis. And so these are a bit old data from Hilaire. Uh, what is important here is that those um, aggregation pheromones were able to attract and the egg parasitoid of the pod bug. And this is really what we wanted. Uh, but we were astonished to see that uh, those pheromones 
are also attracting uh, Maruka, uh, Maruka moths. And, and quite a substantial number actually here, about 20%, depending on the locations and the compounds. <clears throat> so, uh, and, and more recently, we were actually able to, to capture also the parasitoids. So this gives us a new tool, first for monitoring populations, but also uh, to think about uh, lure and kill devices for the for the for the mod, and uh, recruitment devices for the parasitoids to to invite them. Let's put it like this: earlier in the field, uh, and and be able to attack early stages of the caterpillar. So let's switch gear now and move to Niger, where we finally started our socioeconomic study on characterizing farm households and also assessing the adoption of agroecological practices. So this socioeconomic survey was carried out by our PhD student, a lady, and she looked at close to 700 farm households. I'm not going to report all the details of the statistics, but what is worth noting is that some 20% of the households were managed by uh, women, also the, the farms actually. The, the household size for Niger is, is probably one of the highest in West Africa. Uh, they have a high natality rate and so it's, it's over 10 individuals. Um, and then uh, look at the, uh, the, 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 the yields in cowpea, although the areas are quite big, but the yields are still very low. So, um, and then of course the student is looking into this data a little bit more in details and trying to find factors and determinants. So here is just preliminary work that she has started to cluster those data uh, according to, to the yield and the factors influencing yield. So we will hear more about this in the course of the year. So last year I presented details of how to produce and utilize the NIMT bag. And this year I want to focus a little bit more on ways of scaling this information to a large number of uh, users. Uh, so this will be done using uh, animation video provided by Scientific Animations Without Borders, Sabo, and collaborators. So we really want to use this technology, which has proven to be very, very efficient. Uh, I'm not going to present you the video because it's not ready yet, but just to show you some of the stunning pictures that uh, are snapshots actually of the video. So these are the neem seeds, then they are collected and pounded grounds. Uh, they are winnowed and then we produce the, the, the neem uh, seed powder, uh, if possible using uh, the game changers that I presented last year. So these small motorized uh, mills. Then uh, we present details of how to sew the, the bag, how to fill it with the ground neem seeds and then to package them and to sell them for money. Then the neem tea bags are soaked overnight in water and sprayed the next day uh, with a normal sprayer. And then the sale of the neem tea bags, of course, is uh, uh, bringing extra income to households and which can be used, for instance, for education of the kids. Then I'm also going to report on cross-cutting activities. The cross-cutting activity in Burkina is not started yet, but it's going to start soon. Um, the one in uh, Niger, uh, preparing, uh, expanding the use of the FIA for, for, um, for pot sucking box. So um, here we have uh, made some progress on the scouting animation, how to show uh, farmers how to scout in very simple forms. So we have here 
like uh, you know how to take the GPS coordinates and then uh, start this scouting. So here, you know, you will have prompts on the screen. Uh, but what is new this time is that we also have voice commands and you will see that in the next video. So you still have the possibility of using the old way of pushing buttons. Uh, so what is important that when the scouting starts, uh, you will be asked to choose plans and then you will be asked to look at uh, the pots of the plants. If the pots are healthy, they will be reported as healthy and you have a button to click on that. And then if the pots have pot sucking bugs or display uh, attack symptoms, then you have to report them as attacked. And if you see the adults of the pot sucking bug, you report them also here. So then you repeat this as scouting basically for uh, 10, 10 uh, stations. Uh, that's a total of 60, uh, 60 plans. And when you finish the scouting, then the app calculates the infestation threshold. In, if the infestation threshold uh, is attained, then um, it will ask you to treat. So like in this case, you will have an alert and then it will ask you to, for instance, spray with the NIMTI bag or with another biopesticide or with a chemical pesticide, depending what is available in the region. So the next video is about um, the voice commands and I, I, I hope it will show it. You can listen to those voice commands. It's of course in French for the moment, it's meant to be used in Niger. Uh, for ground uh, truthing next, I mean, this, this coming here, yes. So, so this is the start of the scouting. Okay. So the, the voice commands actually are not the main challenging thing. The main challenging thing is really the, the understanding of the prompts. Oui. Il faut répondre au zéro si c'est une gousse saine ou deux si c'est une gousse attaquée. Zéro. So we went a bit farther. We have already started testing the app with one of our uh, field workers. And uh, just to see if the commands are understandable and if the, the voice prompts are also okay. And so far, looks quite good. So we are we are very happy that it works. Now, of course, the next uh, the next step is really to bring the app to Niger during the season and to do wide uh, ground validation uh, with uh, with Lawali and uh, his team. So uh, finally, I was also asked to present some of our scanning plans. So for biocontrol agents, we want to intensify releases south of Kano, as I mentioned in the introductions. And this will happen around this area here. This is Kano. And this is a big irrigation scheme, the Kadava irrigation area, about 500 square meters. This is a place where there is a lot of alternative host plants and Maruka is passing the dry season ready to invade the cowpea fields. 
uh, from this region and which has very serious implication for the whole uh, northern region. Uh, so if we can make impact here with the parasitoids, then I think we will have uh, gone a long way in, fi in fighting Maruka pot borer. Uh, in terms of biopesticides, I already showed you the Sabo video animation. So that will be our scaling enabler uh, for, for the NIMT bag. Um, in Burkina Faso, we are thinking of installing the NIMT bag production units and uh, Fuseni and colleagues have already made some progress in that. Uh, we are also thinking of, actually we are doing, uh, leveraging scaling funds for Niger and Burkina through a GIZ project. Uh, the proposal is being finalized for submission. And also very important that we had discussions with the regulatory authorities of SILS, uh, basically to register the biopesticides. Right now we have a temporary uh, admission to, to use the biopesticide, but we want to anchor them in a proper ECOWAS uh, legislation for future use and also commercialization. So, and for the FIA, uh, FIA is, right now we are very happy, but uh, we have to think of scaling the FIA beyond the project lifespan. And this is only possible through the involvement of private sector, or this, this case is a startup enterprise, Zoko based in Ghana. They have wide experience already scaling out uh, climate advisories for farmers. So at this point, I would like to acknowledge USAID through the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Legume uh, System Research at MSU for sponsoring our project. And of course, the whole team on the ground for their collaboration, for, their, uh, for keeping with these hard times of COVID and I would like to thank all of you for attending this meeting. Thank you very much and have a nice day.